Hey everybody, Mike Wolf here again to bring you another fun and exciting tutorial on 3DS Max. Today we're going to do a quick cloth simulation. This has been it's been heavily requested by uh, plenty of my students, uh, and so I figure we'll give you the quick several minute rundown. Uh, so we're going to go a little fast. Try to keep up. Pause the video if you need to. That's the great beauty of having this recorded. So let's get right into it. Uh, pretty much empty scene. And what we're going to do is just pull out a box real quick. And then right on top of it, we're just going to pull out a plane. And if you can imagine it with me, the plane's going to act as our cloth object, and the box is going to be what we're going to be colliding with, essentially. So now that we've got the objects, we need to add the modifier. So with our plane selected, we'll go to our cloth modifier and just add that real quick. And there's one other thing we need to do is tell Max what is going to be the cloth and what is it going to collide with. So in this case, it's just going to collide with the box. So we'll go to the object properties and grab the plane, set that to cloth. That's step number one here. And then I'm just going to grab a preset and you can see there's plenty of different materials in here. I'm just going to set it to silk because I know that that deforms fairly well uh, and you'll be able to see a lot more of it here. Uh, every, all these settings below, like the UVs, uh, you know, density damping, all these fun little dials and numbers, you can leave those alone and essentially ignore them for now. It's a whole other level of cloth that you're probably not prepared for. So for now, just use the presets, play around with them, see if they give you the effect that you need, chances are there's one of them in there that will work for you. So now that I have the plane all set up, uh, we need to get our box in there. So we're just going to go to Add Objects, find the box in our scene, there it is. Grab the box and just set it as the collision object, okay? So plane is the cloth, box is the collision object. It's pretty much that simple. We'll hit OK, and if we go to our box, you'll see that the cloth modifier has actually been instanced to it, uh, and everything's already preset, but we'll be actually running it from the plane side of things. All right, so now I'm ready to simulate. So let's look at the, our options here in the simulation part of the rollout. Uh, there's a simulate local, and that essentially just runs the simulation. There's a simulate local damped, and basically what that means is it takes longer to run that simulation, which means it's more accurate in the way that it actually calculates the cloth deforming. Uh, and then there's the simulate button, and all that does is it kicks out keyframes down in your timeline uh, in order for you to use it for some sort of animation purpose, but for our purposes we're just going to be looking at it as a static image Okay, we don't need to animate with it at all, so we're just going to be toggling between the simulate local and the simulate local damped for now. So let's go ahead and just hit the top one, simulate local. And ooh, that's probably not good. We'll click the button again just to turn it off. Uh, and what's happening here is, what you have to understand is that the modifiers or any real process inside of 3ds Max that requires deformation on some level requires a lot of geometry in order to operate. So if we reset this by just clicking reset state, it pops back up to the top where it should be. And I'm going to hit Alt B just to open up. Well, maybe not. Actually hit Control B accidentally. Alt B to open our viewport config just to go to our statistics tab, little shortcut there. And we'll just turn that on in the viewport and hit OK. Uh, you can see my planes actually got 16 polygons. For some reason I think it's counting uh, back faces, which uh, I'll have to figure out how to turn that off eventually. Uh, and then the cubes only got six. And that's not enough geometry for the collisions to actually occur. So I'm going to go down to my box and I'm just going to add some segments all the way around. Uh, and then I'm just going to add a turbo smooth. I'm going to do this for two reasons. One is a quick way to add a lot of geometry, and two, it's going to round out these corners, so I don't really have to worry about the corners breaking through uh, the mesh of my plane. I'm just going to up this to two, make it a little bit rounder there, uh, and that should be good. And then I'm going to go up to my plane and essentially do the same thing. Uh, we'll just do uh, we'll do a lot more because the plane obviously is the one doing the deforming, so uh, that's going to be fairly important. And then we're just going to add a turbo smooth. I'll up that to two again just to give it a little bit more uh, leeway to do its deforming. And then we're ready to try it again. So let's hit simulate local. 
and see if we can see what's going on here. All right, so it's deforming pretty well. We can actually pan around, zoom, rotate, all you want to do while this is actually simulating. And so it, it bounced in, and now it's bouncing back out. Gravity's just kind of taking effect. Uh, the f cloth force is behaving the way it should, actually. Uh, I was hoping to see uh, the cloth actually break its own mesh so I could show you what would happen there. But basically, sometimes you'll get some collisions on the sheet itself, not with the box, uh, and it'll start pushing your geometry way out, and it'll just keep growing and growing. It'll look really weird. You won't know what's going on. Uh, so let's turn off the simulation for a second. So really what that means is that it's colliding with itself. It doesn't know what to do. In order to avoid that, what we can do is we can go over here to self collision we can just check that on okay right now it's set to zero I usually set this about two or three just know that depending on your machine this will essentially give you a performance hit or you'll take a performance hit rather than give it uh, and so we want to be careful with this don't take it up too high if you don't have to it's perfectly normal to run this simulation multiple times uh, in order to get it right sometimes you'll have to move the sheet so maybe we have to move it just a little bit over uh, or you know rescale it uh, add more geometry whatever you have to do in order to get it to run fairly well I've obviously done this uh, example quite a few times so I guess I'm getting it right uh, right off the bat which is kinda odd for me anyways we can simulate local we can actually stop this right in the middle and then we can change our our simulation mode so we were just using simulate local I'm just gonna go down to the damped uh, and it's gonna take a little bit longer to go through but again a little bit more accurate so let's uh, now that I have self collision turned on I know I'm probably not gonna have an issue at all um, this corner might give me one if I let it go long enough but regardless I think you get the point so now that we have it nice and draped over got some pretty good uh, deforming go on, going on uh, one thing we need to look at is the fact that it is still a plane okay and a plane is essentially a 2d object right it's infinitely thin there's no depth to it so what we can do to change that is there's a modifier called shell and we'll just add this straight onto the top that effectively as you probably have guessed by now uh, throws a shell around it and we can kinda control the outer amount the inner amount we can up it down it whatever we need in order to give it the thickness we want now you're saying well now I have a box well yes it's kind of a glorified box but still a box let's just add another turbo smooth on there real quick and what that's gonna do is it's gonna add a little bit more geometry okay and round out the smooth surfaces like it should but it's also going to round out that edge that boxy edge that you're complaining about a second ago uh, and if we want we can up it to two make it a little bit more rounder on the sides obviously a lot more geometry uh, if we kinda take this number in half that's a about a hundred and twenty thousand polygons just on the one side um, so you know it's very much worth it as long as you're not having to go through and animate it otherwise you've got to follow it probably a completely different workflow anyways it gave us a nice effect for just a few minutes worth of work so test that out try it uh, later on we're gonna have a couple of tutorials on what else you can do with cloth for instance I always get asked how do you do curtains and drapes how do you make them look lifelike and that involves some animation so we'll definitely get to it also if we go down to the cloth modifier you also have cloth forces and that way we can actually add things like wind so we can have our curtains blowing in the wind. Maybe we'll combine those two. So stick around. Uh, we'll be sure to show those off pretty soon. Uh, but for now, have fun playing with cloth. It's an exciting tool, and it's fun to just watch it fall all over the place. Uh, for today's tutorial on cloth, I'm Mike Wolf, and we'll see you in the next video.